Anyway, it yeah. gives me great pleasure to have the super wonderful Gary Elphick here. Uh, the last time we spoke, things were looking a little bit hairy, but he guaranteed us that things were going to turn around, and I believed him because I knew they would. And um, we've had uh, a five-game unbeaten run, a uh, fantastic uh, uh, no goals conceded, great defensive work. Uh, unfortunately, we lost 1-0 uh, on Saturday to Bishop Stortford in a game that could have gone either way. Chances either end. Unfortunately, it didn't, didn't go our way. Um, Gary, looking forward, uh, how do you think things are shaping up to begin with? Um, yeah, it's, it's been a, a solid start. I think, um, obviously, um, if, if someone was to offer me this position now, then I would, I would, I'd accept it. You know, obviously, I want to be at the top of the league. I want to be, um, sort of challenging, but obviously I'm a realist. I understand how things work in football um, with timing of, of signings and rele- releasing players and, and, and so on. And and to be fair, like um, we didn't have our uh, the rub of the green Saturday either because um, Sam Hassler, unfortunately, had to pull out late due to illness. And then also Bailey Akerst, uh, who we've done all our work with uh, during the week regards training. The, the league had registered him but the FA and the EFL hadn't. Uh, and we registered him on Wednesday at midday. So for that not to have uh, been looked at is is, is beyond me. Um, so well, we all know what into... the FA is. We, everyone's yeah, got a big yeah. FA. Um, so, yeah, you're going into the biggest game of the season, maybe at yeah. home, and you know straight away that you're two players down. The squad is is, is sort of bare thin at the moment. We, we know we have to recruit. Um, and we, we're looking to get the right bodies in. So it's just one of them, Chris. I, I, I sort of, uh, I've, I've played with the, the cards I've been dealt with recently. Um, I don't think letting Jill or Kai uh, go has, has affected anything because, as I say, it's all about balance and uh, and getting it right. And I, I, unfortunately, it just didn't work out with those two signings. A um, little bit like England, if you like, with Harry Kane and sort of Ben Pope, if he's coming deep and, and coming to support uh, the players around then you, you've got to have pacing behind him and yeah. that's unfortunately we we still haven't really sort of solved it and that's probably why you get the effect you do when when you get someone like Joe Gabod up top because he has got that pace and power and then you've got Pope who, who can work off him to drop deep uh, and protect the ball but you've also you just got that threat always in behind so uh, it's, it is what it is at the moment I know yeah. exactly I feel I know exactly what we need the staff mm-hmm. do and Crikey, if that's top of the league and we've got beat 1-0 by a corner, which we have to defend better, mind you, Yeah. with a with a bare sort of squad, you know, I, I, I'm i sort of really positive if we can get the right men through the door, what can happen. Big onus on me now to to, to bring the right people and, and help the current squad. And, you know, with Darren and uh, Darren Burney and, and Billy Wood, um, I think they'll they'll support me if 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 the right person comes along. So we 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 now like where we've released a couple. We've we've got a little pot there. Hopefully that is ready to go once the the right person is identified. But one thing that has come apparent it is fairly tough to recruit at Hastings just just because of the location. So when you're especially trying to tap into the London market straight away, mm-hmm. the travelling. Um, and and as a club going forward, there are little things we have to look at. We had a meeting the other week and, you know, sort of maybe have to move a training session towards sort of Tunbridge Wells, that sort of way, just to then your network circles sort of expanding a little bit. So hopefully when the club does sort of go through the leagues and you can get a sort of um, a different calibre of player, if you like. So it's they're all little interesting things, Chris. I'm I'm learning on the job as well, regards how things may have to be done and, streamlining certain things to get more productivity out of mm. other things. So, um, yes, it's a, it's one big learning curve. It's one that I enjoy. Obviously, I don't enjoy getting beat. And I, I, I apologise to some of the fans. They're all chanting my name on Saturday. And I come in like a, a face like thunder. I'm just a... I am a winner. And it, and it guts me just to get beat 1-0 to the leaders by by that sort of goal. So, um, I apologise if anyone was uh, sort of looking at me. Thinking, so, we did take it personally, Gary. Don't yeah, you worry, I mate. Just, uh, yeah, I wear my heart on my sleeve sometimes, maybe too much. And that's, you know, as I get older, maybe I'll become a slightly more calmer. And, and you know, the, the lads have been brilliant up to now. And, and maybe uh, I just need to take a little step back, look at what we've done so far. And but also, I'm, yeah, I just want to win games. I want to improve the team, Chris. So, yeah, it'll be so, okay, mate. Well, just there's two little things mentioned there. Firstly, it was slightly, slight jokey way. Um, Big Malk, obviously Craig Stone's dad, who thinks he's a big agent now. 
says he's unsettled Mbappe over in France. I mean, would that be someone you might look at, Gary? Give us that pace, wouldn't he, Chris? Yeah, he would, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, hopefully Melk can go to business with that one. I'll, yeah. I'll get him the next flight to Paris with his uh, <laughs> with his black leather suitcase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, no, you, obviously you mentioned Joe Gabodi there. Uh, is there yeah. There's obviously whispers that he possibly might be coming in. Is that a possibility? Okay. He's def- yeah, it's definitely a possibility. I've spoke to their manager, Neil Harris. Um, he, he ba- uh, unfortunately, he got concussed in a cup game. So the protocol now, I think, is two weeks off. And then he has to do two physical training sessions before they allow him to play a game again. Mm. Um, so uh, he, today, sorry, Chris, is his last protocol to, to get through the training session mm. to make sure he's got the all clear. After that, then I can get on the phone to Neil and hopefully maybe something gets sorted out but also in the long run as well I'm not uh, I'm not dumb to knowing that you know he's, he's only a lone player I'll, I'll, at the end of the day I'd rather have permanent fixtures yeah. as well just so you know they're a Hastings player for a sustained period of time and you can work at it at, at training and things like that and you know he's he, yeah he's your player basically so uh we haven't stopped. There's there's seven days gone in for certain players, like all, all weekend basically. I've I've been at it, so uh, yeah. it's the, it's the it's the hardest part of non-league for me is, is recruitment. And um, we've probably been lucky at Hastings for the last few years where we've had real good uh, crop of youth players coming up and supporting yeah. it. And and that that even works in circles as well, Chris. So sometimes you'll turn over quite a lot of players, but other times there'll only be one or two. And yeah, so obviously it's it's a it's a balancing act, but it's um it's one that we will get right. Let's just talk about some of the players we have got, though. I mean, like, yeah. Lloyd Dawes uh, look, look great for the first 10, 15 minutes. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, Niggles kicked in again. I mean, watching him running down that right-hand side, and it was like he looked like a physical specimen, you know, he looked yeah. complete condition. And I mean, what is it with him? I mean, is it is it uh, a bad yeah. one? Or... He's, he's pulled his hamstring. He's, he's had his heart ripped out of him, to be honest with you, Chris. I've... I've yet to talk to him. I tried ringing him mm. yesterday. He said he's going to ring me today. He's got to let the dust settle. But it's, it's a complete different injury. It's a hamstring now. Yeah, completely gutted and devastated, mm. really, because it changed the whole complexion of the game for me as yeah. well. Um, because first half, I was actually really happy. I just thought we had to tidy up a few things within possession. Um, and we would have come out second half uh, with our tails up. But obviously, that happens just before half time. So, yeah, as I say, it's... If the fans look at it, they uh, they've got every right to maybe moan at the lacklusterness of it of the of our attacking play. But like, really, you've you've lost Hassler, you've lost Bailey Acres, and you've lost Lloyd Dawes. Um, yeah, big players. And you work all week to get it right, and this um, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's devastating. It really is. You, yeah, you just got to take it on the chin, and, and as I say, just like life, isn't it? You get you get cards dealt with to, to you and you've, you've just got to um, be flexible and, and try and work the best way you can so it's a gut up we all you know, obviously now going forward I've got to probably put Lloyd to the to the back of the pack if you know and and think what's he, he's not going to be fit now for a sustained period of time so mm. I've got to move um, so that we get we're basically we're getting to the part of the season now Chris where it, it's, it's business time coming yeah. up to Christmas for me and we've got to know exactly how our, our squad's going to look uh, what my starting eleven is going to look like, and and, and work at it hard, and and get the results. Well, it's a real shame. I know that yeah, we were all all of us us fans we were all happy. We know what Lloyd can do, and it's just yeah. it's just tragic for him. It's tragic for him. Yeah, happened, so. yeah. No, it's just been. I've I've actually been sort of running with him every Saturday morning, and I've seen how fit he looks. And yeah, I, uh, there's no one more gutted than me, and because I've really sort of tried helping him through it, and. And he, he was, he's like the run he'd done with me last Saturday, he, he blew me away. You know, I know I'm 37 now, but he blew me apart. And you're thinking, crikey, he's ready now. Play, played 90 minutes on the on the Monday and you're thinking, well, go on then. It's, it's time to yeah. to let the reins off you. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's gutting, but um, we move on. It, it, it'll come back at maybe at some point, I'm not sure. Um, and it might be that he's just like a last 25-minute player for us, which I'd rather have that than nothing. So, yeah. um, we'll just see how it goes, Chris. Yeah. Hey. Another player that you, you put up front, you've got obviously James Hull. Um, yeah. All of us, all of us Hastings fans, keen that this lad, as he's one of our own, does well. He had a couple of chances. I just wish he could have put a couple of them away. It was a real, yeah. You know, obviously, he does a ton of work. He, you know, yeah. he works his socks off. Um, I mean, how do you feel for James on Saturday? 
Yeah, it's just it's, it's football is a game of small margins. If he if he puts that away in the first five minutes, his confidence would have gone through the roof. Um, and I think he is a sometimes. Well, I think any youngster is. I think that we're all sort of players that if if something's going well, you get more and more confident. Um, and unfortunately, he, he missed that chance, and he worked hard tirelessly to, to sort of sixty five minutes after I made the sub. But um, he, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. And. Once again, balance act. You know, you get the right senior players around him. Um, then obviously, you, he's, you know, you're bringing him in within the herd and he's, his confidence will come up. And that's that's vital for young players. And that's, once again, a job that I need to look at myself and get the right players through the door and, and help him out as well. Just quickly talking about senior players. I mean, I know we lost the game. And a game that we, you know, could have gone either way. But that to have that Sam Adams on the bench to come on, I mean... It's just tremendous. I mean, the, the, a fantastic leader and, you know, turns the game, still compassable. Uh, I mean, your thoughts on Sam and, you know, what he brings? Well, I've just, I think I've said it for every, every sort of newspaper interview I've ever done. He, he's my, he's my favourite teammate ever. You know, he's, when I was playing, um, he got the best out of me and I got the best out of him probably as, a, as teammates and um, I just couldn't wish to, to, have any better person involved alongside me even if he's a player he's just he's infectious uh, even at uh, he's I think he's 35 now um, great role model for players as, as, and as I've said Sam, Sam dictates to me when he retires I don't dictate to him <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's how I highly regard I have him um, so yeah one, the, the best for me as a teammate just selflessness just not worried about having his name in and highlights and um, I just love them types of players so yeah, absolute legend okay. well let's quickly look forward uh, today is the day we're playing uh, Wingate and Finchley uh, yeah. this evening yeah well, they, obviously this is coming out after the game I mean yeah. what we're looking to do uh, we, any surprises up in the team or yeah there is yeah I'm going to put Tom Chalmers up front oh so, right oh blimey yeah okay. yeah yeah we, we're going to go um so obviously I might look a mug after this because it obviously goes out on Thursday, so we'll see. But uh, after watching them, after watching Wingate uh, in quite detailed, uh, they, they're not great at um, dealing with high balls or second phases. So uh, we will go slightly more direct. So we're going to put Tom Chalmers up top with um, with Ben Pope. Uh, we're going to have Nori. We'll start on the right. We will then put Hassler to slightly unorthodox left winger, but. Why that is is because we're trying to look at rotation between him and Kane Penn. Mm. So Kane Penn will go more advanced and Hassler will end up as almost like a left fullback to try and get him on the ball to to do what he does best, yeah. which is like his quarterback role. Um, we try and find uh, TC aerially. We try and slip Kane Penn down the sides. Um, and also on the other side, which in recent weeks, I, doesn't, I don't think it's been too great, is the... The partnership with uh, Jake Elliott and TC hasn't quite fired. And I just think sometimes they, they end up taking up each other's position mm. uh, with forward runs. So what we're going to do is where Nori sort of likes to drift in, we'll look after the ball. We'll try and get Jake Elliott on the overlap on that side. Oh, um, nice. Might look a clown, Chris, after this, uh, when it comes out Good. Thursday. Or it, it might look but like It's that Friday. Straight, I'll, I'll edit it, uh, mate. I'll cut it all out uh, right now. Yeah, if he no, if he no. does go to play, keep it all in. Yeah, oh, that's, no, <laughs> so, of um, but yeah, so we we we've got to, we've got to come up with something different. And I just think with TC, you know, he's a powerful athlete. He's he's brilliant in the air, and he's he's going to dribble at people. So um, why not why not try exactly. and spark it? One Exciting game. stuff. Yeah. Exciting stuff. Yeah. I mean, talking to TC quickly, like you know, he's a good player. You know, I mean, how long do you think you can hold on to him? Because you know, he's. Uh, yeah, he's a great player. Um, I actually, I, I think there's, there's there's sort of contract talks going on now, Chris. Um, oh, nice. Okay. He's, he's he's got an agent, and I think it's, it's not Malcolm, a little is bit, it? He <laughs> isn't, unfortunately. If it was Malcolm, it, we would have striked a deal by now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's just a little bit. There's a couple of situations which uh, just sort of delay it slightly, but. I just hope, actually, Chris, on, on, uh, it doesn't sort of affect TC. Just the last couple of weeks, I just feel that maybe he's been sort of just average rather than mm. his usual self. And um, just they're all young kids. My advice is just really try and concentrate on the football and and, and enjoy it because yeah. 
uh, life's too short, your careers are too short, and to get involved with sort of money stuff and things like that, I just, um, I'd always say the same to any young player. I just hope he, that's probably why I've stuck him up front as well. Let's, let's try and ignite him, let's try and get his flavour back for the game, maybe, which has gone missing the last couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, it's, I might be a football manager, but I'm a, I'm a human being and I just want to get the best out of good human beings. So um, fingers crossed. Yeah. What, you're, you're super Gary Elphick, mate. Get it right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, so we look for the next five games. You know, let's yeah. just say you look at that block and I mean, obviously we've got Hearn Bay away yeah. after this. Uh, we've got, I think we've got Potter's Bar at home. So that'll be a toughie. Um, but there's, yep. there's some, there's some. I mean, we've got, uh, I think it's Billericay there, mid-table. I mean, there's some games there that we can get points from. I mean, how do you see the next sort of five, six games? Um, well, if the lads can't be buoyant by playing top of the league and them getting a scrappy 1-0 with us as a, as a bear, you know, a bear squad, then mm. that, that has to give you belief, Chris, in my opinion. Yep. So um, I'm there to win every single game. I'm there to attack every single game and, and try and get the best for us. Obviously, it's horses for courses, so um, I'll have to judge it by hopefully what personnel we have in the squad and what we can bring into the squad and knowing our strength. So, uh, for example, if the Wingate game goes well, then maybe keeping TC up top, playing slightly more direct is, is, is a thing for me to go. At. Um, I'll always be flexible. That's, that's that's for certain. You can see that with my subs or anything I do is... I'm always there to win games. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we'll give it a right good go and um, we, we should be confident. That's for sure. Okay. All right. Well, listen, thank you, Gary, for your time as ever. And, well, I will see you at the game because I'm there tonight. Yeah. As long Brilliant. as I just stop oil lot, don't stop us getting there. Yeah, exactly. And we, we all yeah. turn up at 10 o'clock at night. But, no, um, yeah. take care and, and see you at the game, Gary. Yeah. No, top man as always, Chris. Thanks thank a lot, Thank you mate. very much, Gary. Take Cheers, care. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. mate.